Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for this very powerful new moon in Taurus and also Uranus moves into Taurus that same day. So this is amazing. This, uh, I don't, I have noticed that this happens very often, but I did remember that um, back in uh, November we had that new moon Scorpio and it kicked off the Jupiter going into Scorpio. Now we have the new moon in Taurus and it's kicking off the Uranus going into Taurus. That's the big news here, is the Uranus going into Taurus. Um, and it's, it's a, about a week off from as I'm, when I'm recording this. I'm recording this on the 7th. By the way, it's happening um, on May 15th, 7.48 a.m. Eastern. Times will vary. Uh, I think it might be on the 16th for some people. But at any rate, um, I've already been feeling this. You know, to me, it's kind of unsettling. You know, I've been feeling a little bit nervous or shaky, a little bit um, not grounded. Because Taurus is such a grounding energy. It's probably the most grounding earth sign, let alone maybe even the most, most grounding sign of the um, entire zodiac, you know, because it's so fixed and grounded. And I always like being around Taurians, well, because of the musical connection. Um, but I, Taurus energy always just is so solid and so... Um, it's just simple, grounded rock. You know, I've had many Tauruses in my life who have been my rocks over the years. Um, so this is like, because <laughs> that Uranus, you know, that Uranus ruled by Aquarius, it's that electrify, you know, it's that electrifying, that zigzag, you know, I always love to point that out, that the Aquarian symbol with the two, you know, this, it's, it totally fits, you know, and it's Uranus, Aquarius, kind of the same energy. Um, because it's electric and it makes it makes things vibrate and go you know it's it's not it's it's very different i mean i don't know if you could even get more different from the the natural vibration of taurus with this influx of this uranian energy i did mean to go back and look at some history darn it i totally maybe we could do it real quick um at the end i'll look some stuff up but it's been a long time it's it was like the 1930s or something like that i can i can do i could find that i got my ephemeris right here let's i think it was like the 1930s or something like that okay buddy i have to do the reading now no slobbing on me <laughs> rocco likes to slobber on me from time to time <laughs> oh it was in the 20s well, the 20s was Pisces. Uh, I'm just looking through the ephemeris real quick. I should have had this. Uh, I, I did make a note that it will be in um, It will be in Uranus. It will be in Aquarius until 2026. Yeah, it's like 19. It's the 19s. So it's almost like 100 years ago. It was 100 years ago the last time that uh, Uranus. I'm looking at Uranus and Aquarius. Duh. We want you on some Taurus. Okay, I knew there was something off with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, this is too far. That's when Uranus was in Aquarius. Sorry about that. That's what you do with the live videos. That stuff like that happens. But I like to just go live because okay, Uranus who went zero Aquarius, zero Taurus rather. Nineteen June of 1934. It's interesting that it was June too. I mean, it's in May this year, but it's a little. You know, not far off. It was a, you know, pretty close uh, lineup there. So it's it's a long time ago. You know, many of us watching this video weren't even alive back then. You know, some of us were. Some people were still living that were born in the 30s. But I I would say that you know most people were if you were, were alive for the last one you probably weren't an adult. You probably were just born or a child. You know, I mean, there's people that are you know in their late 90s and 100 years old that were maybe an adults by then. You figure 1934, if you were 20 years old, you would have had to have been born in 1914. So I don't know how many people born in 1914 are still alive. They'd be over 100 years old right now. So it's a new energy. It's a very new energy. Um, if you were born at that time, you're having your Uranus return. I'm sure many people born in the 30s are still living. But um, sometimes when it's something happens when you're born or you're a young child, you don't really... You know, it's it's a different kind of experience than experiencing as an adult. So it's new for most of the people on the planet. Let's just put it that way. You know, it's a very new energy. Um, I'm feeling ungrounded. I'm going to be going today and trying to get grounded. You know, I've been trying to be outside, get my feet on the ground, get grounded. 
I've been feeling really, I don't know if it's this um, event that everyone's talking about or what it is, but I've been having like fluttery chest and real like, like I'm not, not grounded. That's just the simplest way of putting it. Well, it could be the Uranus, but it's also this big shifting time. We've got, you know, the Chiron went into Aries, the Uranus goes into Taurus. So there's a lot of ships happening. And it's like, uh, you know, that song, Standing on Shaky Ground, you know, because you're, you're the, literally the ground is shifting. And I believe that this, uh, the, uh, the tornado erupted, not a tornado erupted, but the, uh, there was a volcano that erupted. I wouldn't be surprised if there's earthquakes, although, yeah, there's earthquakes, you know, pretty much every day somewhere. Um, I used to love that article in the paper, the news of the world, you know, it would show all the freaky nature stuff that was happening. But I kind of lost track of it when I stopped reading, you know, getting the paper. Uh, but anyway, so this is major. You know, this is a major, major thing happening here. And the new moon is kicking it off. And I, again, I, I know that back in November, the new moon in Scorpio, which is the opposite, oops, the opposition, and this new moon is opposing Jupiter, kicked off uh, that. The new moon in Scorpio kicked off Jupiter's um, entrance into Scorpio. And now we have the new moon in Taurus that's kicking off Uranus's entry into Taurus. Well, one of the big things that Taurus, of course, you know, in the, in the flat wheel, which is how I run these charts now, this is called a flat wheel, if you're not familiar, zero, zero, zero on the cusps. The second house, it's Taurus, it's ruled by Venus, but it's also, I mean, the main thing you think of second house is money, right? So there's going to be changes in the money, for sure. There's going to be changes in our money over the next, well, till 2026, so that's what, eight years. Over the next eight years, which is a Saturn number too, which is also like stability and Capricorn, but excuse me, I don't want to get too far off the track here. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so money's going to be changing. Well, we already are changing. I mean, you know, you think about cash. How, who carries cash? Look at back in 1934. You know, now look at what's now. Who, who carries cash anymore? I mean, I do because I always like tipping cash and stuff like that. But I don't. I don't carry a lot of cash around. But, you know, who carries cash anymore, you know? Nobody, pretty much, you know. It's all electronic. Everything's electronic. Uranian, you know, Uranus is all electronic. And now we're having the alternative uh, currencies are coming into play, the Bitcoin and all that, which I could totally kick myself because I signed up for Bitcoin a while back and I was on some old computer and I got rid of it. So I totally lost out on that one. Um, and the funny thing is, I just cleaned out my attic, like, um, over the past year, I've been trying to clear out my house so I can move, and it was just like last year, I had all these old computers in the, in the attic, and I'm like, what am I saving all these old computers for? <laughs> and one of those places, Stables, or Best Buy, or whatever, um, you know, they take them and they clear them and recycle them for you, so I loaded up my whole car with computers one day, you know, and took them all out there, and it's just like, oh, damn, because that Bitcoin information was on there. So, well, whatever, you know, can't cry about it, can't worry about it. But that's where we're moving. If, if ne not saying necessarily it's Bitcoin, but there are a lot of them. You know, there's a lot of these alternative money, currency things. This is the Uranus is bringing that in in a big way. I think by the end of this transit, and by the, when we get to the 2026, you know, our whole money thing is going to be completely uh, changed. You know, I was, gonna, I was trying to say changed. But what I was hearing in my head and what almost flew out of my mouth was eradicated. So, I mean, that could be too. I'm not, I'm not gonna, not gonna say that that can't be. So this is this is huge, you know. And I I feel like I'm already feeling. I'm sure many of you are. Let's take a look at this aspect here, because as always, I've not looked at anything. <laughs> but I like it that way. Uh, we've got um, Jupiter trying Neptune. I think that's been going on, but it's pretty exact now. So that's a nice, um, that's a nice energy. This is a nice energy for being creative, for being dreamy, for being artistic, for spiritual soul searching kind of stuff. You know, pretty cool. Um, there is. I'm gonna be. I'm. St I'm gonna. I'll talk about it a little bit later more. But uh, since many people were like emailing me, they missed out on the Equinox chart read. I'm going to open up for it. I'm going to do it every season now because people really like it and it's very popular. So, But it always is going to be a limited time. So I'm going to open up for the um, solstice, summer solstice in the northern hemisphere, but I'm just going to call it the solstice read. 
which of course include, uh, occurs in June 21st, I think. But um, I'm opening up for that now. And one of the things I did look at the chart briefly. There's a lot going on in that chart, so there should be a lot to talk about in relation to your chart if you decide to order it. But there will be this big grand trine in water. That's one of the big things that's going to be happening on that solstice, uh, the summer solstice. I, I'll call it the summer solstice, but of course, you know, if you're in the southern hemisphere, that's in, it's the winter solstice. Uh, but anyway, so this trine, this is sort of like a setting, almost setting the stage for that in a way, you know. It's sort of a setting the stage of this, you know, there's this uh, stronghold maybe, or there's just this, yeah, this water energy, um, perception, feelings, emotions. Uranus could really, in Taurus, could really knock some stuff loose that's been fixed in our, you know, in our bodies for a long time because it's, it's a very physical, uh, I mean the first house is your physical body and Chiron went in there too so our physical bodies are going through some stuff, healings and stuff too. But with Taurus it feels to me, you know, just like, because Taurians are so physical, you know, they're so grounded and so physical. And, um, you know, this Uranus, you could be stuff that you've been holding in your physical body that you might not even know about. And then with the Chiron, too, you could have some really deep healings with that. Everyone can. So that's interesting. There's some cool stuff going on with the node, too, in that uh, solstice chart. I just ran it before I, I started this. Um, so I wanted to use it for the graphics. But anyways, back to this. We've got, this is trining Pluto, this new moon. Trining Pluto and Lilith up here, so... <laughs> Talk about uh, shake-ups, man. This is some shake-up stuff here. You think every year, oh, the new moon in Taurus, it's so grounding, it's so earthy. This year it's going to be a whole another ball game, a whole different ball of wax going on here. It's going to be really disruptive is the word that comes to mind. You know, very disruptive. Um, Pluto's in there with Capricorn anyway, disrupting our, our Earth stuff. The only saving grace we might have is the other part of this is the Virgo that's missing. Um, so if you have stuff in Virgo, maybe you could, uh, you know, be grounded in that. I don't know. Or maybe it's going to just really shake you up even more. <laughs> Pluto, Mars, Lilith. Look, oh gosh, look at all this up here. Wow. So, um, very much uh, our foundations. Our earth signs are our, our foundations, our grounding. Our, they're all related to money and work and, you know, everything of the earth. Being in the earth plane, you know, and there's some big shakeups happening here. Big turnabout shakeups, um, disruptions. It's, it's just very disruptive. Hopefully, it seems to me this is sort of the saving grace here. That through p prayer, enlightenment, spirituality, uh, maybe because of the, you know, the, the Chiron in the Aries, maybe we can, um, we can kind of feel our way through it. That's what I'm hearing. We can kind of feel our way through it. That might be the ticket there, you know, feeling our way through it. Um, with water, it's always going with the flow, right? Get in that flow. Allow the changes to happen. Don't try to stop the dam that's going, maybe bursting forth here, you know. Or, you know, uh, don't stand on the fault line and say, I'm not going to move when there's an earthquake going on. <laughs> you gotta, you got to get out of the way and allow it to go through and allow it to happen, allow it to pass through. Because you can't stop it. can't stop. You can't stop. You can't stop. You can't stop. What is that? Can't stop. Love and action. Oh, it's uh, Todd Rundgren Utopia. You can't stop love and action. Well, I like that one. That's a good one. Can't stop love and action. We could look that up, too, possibly. I should make some notes. What, are we, what else are we going to look up? World events. <laughs> I might skip that world events, because I could get into a lot. But if anybody else wants to look up 1934 world events, and then love and action uh, lyrics, write that down. I don't want to break away from the chart just yet. Yeah, so intense. What else is happening? Pluto's trying the sun. Pluto's trying the moon. Neptune trying Jupiter. Mars uh, squaring Mercury. Oh, yikes. Yeah, the Mercury, because it's still... Well, Mars is actually squaring Uranus, right? Still, yeah, because 
And you might look, if you're not familiar with astrology, you might look at this and say, well, how is that a square? Because this is Capricorn and this is, you know, Taurus. Well, it's 29. So this is still in conjunction with 29 Aries. Even though it's zero Taurus. I mean, it's zero. Zero, 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 zero. Even though, according to my trusty Maynard here, the, the Uranus doesn't go zero Taurus until 11.23 a.m., which is like four, three and a half hours later, but according to this chart that I ran, it's already there. It's zero, 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 zero. Did I write the chart? The chart's right, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes these are off minuscule amounts. It's happening the same day. It's all happening that day, so... You know, a little bit before 11, a little after 11, whatever. This is saying it's there already. It's, it's zero, 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 zero. So it's it's still conjunct 29 Aries, which is the degree before. So that's why we have that square to Mars. So it, talk about, it's coming in with a blast, man. This is coming in with a blast. This isn't going to go, come in quietly or softly. <laughs> this is some, you know, it's pretty intense. It's very, not pretty, it's very intense. So, yeah, and it's squaring Mercury, too, by a four degree orb. Write your tongue that day, maybe, you know? And, and especially with Uranus, through texts and emails and stuff like that. Just hold on. Hold your, you know, cool your jets. <laughs> Just cool out there for a minute. We don't want to say something abrupt. We don't want to say something harsh. We don't want to fly off the handle. Because we, that could totally happen with a Mercury square margin. You could get pissed off and say something that you regret later. Okay? So bite your tongue. Go try to ground in the earth. You know, channel that energy a different way, to a different direction if you can. <laughs> You know, just try to be aware of that. You know, something else that's happening that is Mercury is trining a Vesta, exactly almost, and trining Saturn. Well, back to what I was just saying with the Mercury um, squaring the Mars and everything. That Mercury trying Saturn, you could fly off, and if you flew off the handle and wrote something or texted something and sent it, Saturn's saying it could have long-term implications. So something that was just a, a heated moment that you said in the moment could, you know, could screw you for a long time. That's what I'm getting, really. You know, it could be, it could bite, come back and bite you in the butt, bite you in the ass. So just be aware of that. This is combustible energy. This is not some little soft, oh, soft, gentle Taurus, the bull in the field, Ferdinand smelling the flowers, like those cart. Remember that cartoon where he was, oh, and he's, you know, like um, all happy and. Um, not tiptoeing, kind of skipping through the fields and everything. <laughs> this ain't that. <laughs> this is a, this is the bull in the china shop, baby. This is um could be. There's potential. It's this is there's no finite answer or solution to anything. But th there's a potential for this to be pretty, pretty, pretty intense here. What else? Anything else going on with the aspects? I was gonna say I don't know what to do. Uh, what about these? They never include the, um, the uh, what you call it here. This is at 14. Uh, Leo squaring Jupiter. Jupiter square series. Okay, and Leo. Yeah, what, what I get out of that is like, especially with authority figures, it's like, don't, uh, don't, uh, you know, don't say something you can would regret. Regret, especially like with a boss or somebody who you, you, a superior. What I'm hearing is somebody that you would have to kiss their ass. That's what I'm hearing. You might have to do a little ass kissing that day, or just if, if you're not up for the ass kissing, you might have to sidestep. You know, just sidestep these conference See, I was trying to say confrontations, and what came out is conversations. But both would be true. I just looked. I have the TV on across the room. I have it muted because I'm. I wanted to catch the weather, and I'll rewind it later. And they're showing the uh, volcano erupts on Hawaii's Big Island. They're showing that right now. It's all over the place. But anyways, back to here. I keep my eyes on here. But it's funny. I just happen to look up and see that. Um, but, you know, you, this could affect your livelihood is what I'm getting. Siri is your abundance, you know. You could, you know, when promotion time comes, you could be like, well, I remember he sent me that email, so, you know, or she said that, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you might say something in the heat of the moment, but it could last a lot longer than that. So just try to be aware of that. Try to maybe sidestep it. Try to maybe, you know, be a little cool. We got that trying and then that squaring over here. Okay. Anything else? 
Well, Chiron's in Aries. We're going to talk a lot more about that. But I think that that adds to this feeling of... I'm getting really that there's blockages in the bodies. Maybe that's why I'm getting all this nervous energy. Because it's almost like... You know, this uh, stuff is going through and there's like these big chunks of hard rock energy like Taurus. Old emotional stuff, you know. And it's like... And it's like breaking it up and clearing, clearing it out. And allowing uh, for the flow. The other thing about Uranus is for the greater good, the higher force, for humanity, you know. So that would be a positive twist on, in the long run, maybe, how we could use this, um, how we could use this energy, right? Um, to look at it from a higher perspective. Taurian energy can be very narrow-minded, you know, very, look, at this is what's right in front of me, this is what I see, this is what it is. And then Uranus is so expansive, it's, it's beyond outer space, you know, it's just out there. Um, that could be another thing, too. We could be grounding in the ET energies a lot more, for those of you that are into that, you know. I keep saying i got to come out about all my stuff with the ETs, and I I'm, I'm really want to do that because I, got, I get so much stuff about it. And for my whole life I have, you know, and I, I've been, I want to get into it. It's just one of those things. It's another thing on my list, you know. And I, whoa, you know, I look at those lists sometimes, and um, I just heard something in the ceiling. It's like, yeah. I thought I did. I live in this old creaky house, too. And maybe it's the ETs on the roof. <laughs> kidding. Totally kidding. Uh, but anyways, um, I forgot what I was saying, too. Oh, yeah, I look at my list, and it's like, well, do some artwork, or you know, work on this creative project, or, you know, the creative stuff tends to get, for me, to get moved up the list <laughs> on my to-do list. I, I, you know, that seems to take more of a precedence and a priority. But I digress. Um... Yeah, so this is some crazy stuff, but it could be grounding in these higher force energies. Um, you know, it could help. It could help Uranus, because sometimes Uranus is sort of like in the ethers. It's sort of floating above in the atmosphere. It's, it's uh, you know, Pisces is the collective unconscious, but Uranus has a, a play in that too, you know. So it could help maybe to bring those, channel those, uh, funnel those. Because this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing them like this, like bouncing around like that. And then I see like a triangle, like almost like a, t a tornado, but it's almost like it's a suction or a funnel. And bring it into that narrow view that the Taurians have s such a great handle on. And Taurus energy is like that too, because they pull through Venus, they pull the creative stuff, and they pull it in into a tangible piece of music or art or whatever the case may be, you know. So they pull that in. They, they're good at that, you know. They're good at grounding stuff in. For me so far, it's been the opposite effect. I've been feeling very ungrounded, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to concentrate on work. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to, you know, it's warmer here where I'm living, so I can get outside more. I'm going to spend more time in the earth grounding and stuff like that. Okay. Well, we can, we'll come back and do our final thoughts on the uh, on that chart. I wanted to show you. Here, this is the reading. Uh, if you go on my page, it's at the very top of the... Here's my main uh, page. And, of course, the menu is up here. Or if you're in a mobile device, it'll be over on the side. So you go into readings, and it's the very top reading. So, you know, it's it's going to be your chart in a bi-wheel. I should have brought that. I don't have one available right now. But it's your chart and then the solstice on the outside. And there's quite a bit of stuff happening that day. I did look at the solstice chart briefly. That is the solstice chart actually worked into the artwork there. That's how I do it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need a drink of water real quick. <clears throat> but um, And I will also pull an animal totem for you. It's for the upcoming season. So it'll be like from June through September, basically. I did the Equinox ones, and it was very popular, and people were emailing me afterwards because they thought, oh, it was too late to get in. So this will be available probably till the end of June. Also, I have a lot of stuff available in Art Mandalas. If you go on the Art page, I've got these t-shirts. If you click on this, I did a whole seri new series of these new t-shirts. It'll take you to this Amazon page with all 12 zodiac signs. So it's the Astrology Mandalas that I do. And then what it is, is I took that and then I took keywords for each one, too. Um, the word, like this is for Pisces, but the word Pisces is not 
in the artwork, and that was intentional. The symbol of Pisces is there, the Neptune, the water sign, the fish, everything else is there. But that was kind of intentional, because I thought that would be like kind of a cool uh, like conversation starter, you know. Oh, what's your shirt say? What does that mean? You know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe some people are like, well, it doesn't even say Pisces. <laughs> you know, but uh, that was intentional. But it has all the key words that I, and here's a, a Sagittarius one. You know, so each sign has that, and it has the ruling planets and stuff. So I thought that's a pretty cool series. You know, it's 20 bucks, or 19.99 through Amazon Prime. You get them shipped free. Oh, by the way, the Amazon changed the T-shirts to a nice, much better. The T-shirts were kind of not so hot, so they've got a much better quality shirt now. It's it's more, it's more soft and more cotton. You know, it's definitely more like a cotton T-shirt, and it's um, also. It still runs a tad small, but not like before they ran so small. But it, it's the sizes are more closer to like American um, shirt sizes. Before they were like way too small. Uh, I, what do I want to look? I want to look up Fernando the Bull cartoon because I just uh, I just totally saw that. Was it? Is it Fernando? I think it's uh, Warner Brothers, isn't it? Uh, Bugs Bunny. Warner Brothers cartoon. Yeah, him. This is the one. And he's like dancing through the fields, smelling the flowers. Yeah, this is what I was, that's what, <laughs> that's what I was, you know, but in the cartoon, I think he, he, t you know, he skips through the fields and smells the flowers and everything. Well, this ain't gonna, I, I shouldn't say this isn't gonna be that, because it could be, but, um, if you think that's all it's about, yeah, you know, you might be in for a little surprise. <laughs> And then love and action ear lyrics. You know, I was thinking about that. 1934 just came to my mind. Uh, love and action uh, lyrics. Yeah, Todd Runger lyrics. That's it. Love and actions. Yeah, this is it. Um, Utopia. 1930s was the the Great Depression, so I hope that we're not going to repeat anything like that, although many people do think there could be a financial collapse. I don't know. I think it'll be transformed. All right, no place to hide, nowhere to run, and nothing you can do because a change must come. See, these lyrics are always, you know, they're always relevant, even though I don't even know the relevance half the time until I read them. So, okay, so this is key. And nothing you can do because a change must come. Totally relevant, okay? You can't stop, you can't stop. I said you can't stop, you can't stop it. You got your tail in the air and your head on the ground. Money, money, money makes your world go round. There again is the reference to the second house of money. You can't stop it, you can't stop it. No, you can't stop it, you can't stop it. I said you can't stop, blah, blah, blah. You can't stop love and action, love and action, okay? You hurt, your head's full of sand. You need a bunch of friends to make you feel like a man, but you can't stop, blah, blah, blah. You could, yeah, you could be the last trace of the master race. Wow, the Nazis really send you to another place. Wow. I think the Nazis were coming to power in that time, too, weren't they? Wow. This looks, it's crazy how this stuff works. I know it's, some people think, oh, you're reading lyrics, it's so lame. It's not lame. It's totally a message from spirit, okay? And then it's just, you can't stop, you can't stop, you can't stop. Okay, now i got to find out about when the Nazis came to power. I believe it was in the 19th, wasn't it? Um, uh, power. Nazi, I put Nazis power, and look at what this says, 1933. So, 1934, I mean, it's right in there. So, I mean, we could go on and on and on about this. This could last forever, but that's crazy how this works out sometimes. But, if we go back to that song for just a second before we finish the chart... The thing is, the, the main gist of that song, which I never even knew there was any reference to the Nazis in that song, um, is you can't stop love in action. And what is Taurus energy? What is Taurus ruled by? Venus, the goddess of love. Maybe that Fernando dude in the fields, you know, sniffing flowers, maybe that is the approach. Maybe that's why they showed it to me. You know, and my logical mind's going, oh, no, no, but maybe that's it. You know, the guy's sniffing the fields and in the flowers, and he's skipping through the, f the flowers and everything. So maybe we could watch, you know, if you want to watch the cartoon on your own, I may, I may later, if I think of it. But this is it. Nothing you can do because a change is going to come. Money, money, money. Yeah. So lots, lots happening. It's a lot, it's a big change. we got to stay grounded. 
maybe love is the answer. Maybe, well, love is probably always the answer, right? You know, if we get real about things, you know, in this earth life, this soul journey that we're on, this soul journey that we're on, you know, uh, love is the answer anyway. But there, there will be shakeups. There's going to be shakeups with the trining the Pluto. I wouldn't be surprised if there's more shakeups, you know, again with the, um, you know, the Earth because it's Earth sign. Taurus is Earth. Capricorn is Earth. More possibly volcanic eruptions. More, um, you know, earthquakes and such. You know, it's funny when we were. I was just talking about that Hawaii earthquake that just happened. I was saw it on the TV a minute ago over there. That's when Uranus is of today, and when that happened yesterday or two days ago, um, Uranus is still in fire in Aries, you know, so it's just like that last blast of fire, you know, and even though it, it's still squaring the Mars and everything, and the Pluto and that, so, you know, it, it's expressing itself through Pluto, I mean, through fire coming up through the Earth, fire water, or whatever, lava, of course, or magma, whatever you want to call it, but, you know, there's some interesting correlations there if you want to kind of look into it. All right, everybody, so hey, thanks so much, I love... These are my favorite readings to do. I really love doing these much more than the card readings. And I, I actually love doing those astrology uh, readings. It's a nice breakup because mostly what I do is just card readings, card readings, card readings. And I, I like doing these quarterly um, astrology readings uh, off of the uh, chart. So do check that out if you want to get a solstice reading with your chart with the, for the next few months. And... Um, Check out everything I have to offer. If you want to order a t-shirt, cool. You know, it's all appreciated. Donating, liking, sharing, everything you do to promote and help me with my channel all goes for me to continue to do the free readings every month, which I've been doing for some years now. It's getting to be years already. It's crazy. But, and I do love reading your comments. I don't always respond to all of them, but I do read them all and I do enjoy reading them all. So but please do continue with that. And um, all your support by buying my wares, my decks, my books, my shirts. All that stuff is so much appreciated. Remember that you are love and beauty incarnate. Have a great new moon in Taurus and Uranus in Taurus for the first time in... Let me just let that, do the math on that real quick. <laughs> 2018 minus 1934. 84 years. First time in 84 years Uranus is in Taurus. Hang on to your bootstraps or something. Because <laughs> it's it you're we probably are in for a wild ride here. Okay. Alright everybody. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.